homeowners, residents are thinking, this is an option for me. I don't have to spend the hundreds of dollars. Well, you going with this $10 or less product is basically you, you've taken your money and you've thrown it away because our research shows that they aren't killing the bed bugs that are hiding. They aren't even, for susceptible, for susceptible bugs, they will kill those, but we've done tests on these bugs genetically, and almost every bug that we have looked at from Ohio is resistant to pyrethroids, and pyrethroids are the active ingredient or the chemical that is, is the, in the product. As you continually expose bed bugs or any insect to low doses of an insecticide, then resistance builds up in the population. And so it means that products that the uh, industry can use, that pest management professionals can use, those products then are rendered ineffective. I'm requesting that the Environmental Protection Agency do a data call-in where they actually say to the manufacturer, show me your data, let me evaluate the data, and sh you t show me how your product works and that it's effective against the insects that are listed on the, um, on the, the uh, container. Seven out of 10 people on average will have some sort of allergic response to the bite itself. So whenever you go to sleep and you have no bites on exposed skin and you wake up in the morning and now you've got itchy red bites, that should say, maybe I have bed bugs. Not definitively that I have bed bugs, but it should raise a suspicion that maybe this could be something that is going on. And so then you want to look for their telltale signs, and those are black fecal spots. Uh, it's basically partially digested blood that has traveled through the entire digestive system of that bed bug, and it has dried in place. It is not a particle, it's liquid, and so it just makes a little tiny spot. These bugs tend to hang out together, and so where you will see little groups of black spots that don't rub off. And it would be in kind of an odd place. It would be on the underside of your furniture. It would be on your mattress or on your box spring or in the crack and crevice of your bed frame. So it may be your recliner that you tend to spend a lot of time in, and it's going to be in deep cracks and, and crevices. Or if you take the, um, the fabric along the uh, bottom of the chair and you lift it up, that may be a place that they're hiding. They typically are not seen out in the open uh, until the population gets very heavy. For people who have no resources whatsoever, then it is going to involve a lot of laundering because if you put your items, even dry, you should just put dry items into the dryer, you want to keep it at at least 120 degrees, um, which is moderate to high heat, a minimum of 30 minutes, and that will kill any bugs, any eggs that are on clothing. Once you have disinfected your clothing that way, you need to keep them in sealed totes or, or plastic bags. You can go on a search and destroy mission. These bugs are very, very soft bodied. You can take a Kleenex if you see some of them, you can squish them. They are not hard bodied like a beetle, which would you wouldn't be able to kill it necessarily that way. You can take a credit card. You can run that credit card, some sort of uh, hard plastic object in cracks and crevices, any bugs that are hiding in there. The physical action of that will kill them. A vacuum is another 
tool that you can use to vacuum up and physically remove a large proportion of the bed bugs. But you need to realize your vacuum can become a harborage and you can spread bed bugs if you share your vacuum with somebody else. So after you, you vacuum, you should take a big bag and put your vacuum in it and tie it off till the next time that you use it. You should dispose of that uh, bag where you've collected some of the uh, bed bugs. So, it, we don't have any easy answers for homeowners. I wish we did. Um, right now, if you can afford it, you should hire a professional. You should get at least three estimates. The highest estimate isn't necessarily the best estimate. I place my luggage in the bathroom because it usually has lin um, linoleum floors or tile floors. Those are, are types of substrates that the bugs really don't like to remain in contact with. A lot of times they like to be in contact with carpet or wood. A big hiding place is, uh, in hotels is under the bed skirt. So you lift up the bed skirt, particularly near, you want to pay a lot of attention to the head of the bed because these bugs key in on the carbon dioxide that we breathe out. Never put your suitcase on the extra bed that's provided. Never put it on the carpeted floor. Never put it up leaning against a baseboard. Never put your clothes in the provided chest of drawers because the chest of drawers is typically a wood surface. These bugs really like to be in contact with wood surfaces. There are lots of cracks and crevices. So then I, I said, well, in real world conditions, bed bugs are actually hiding. They're in cracks and crevices. They're not out in the open unless you have a massive infestation and then you'll find them uh, actually out in the, in the open. But their typical behavior is to be in a hiding spot. So we just covered the container with a very, very thin layer of cloth as if they were under a bed skirt or under a mattress cover or someplace that would be representative of what they were finding. And when we did that, even the Harlan bugs didn't die. So it says that the product actually has to come in contact with a susceptible bug. Any bug that's in a harborage, any bug that is hiding, is not going to receive a lethal dose of this, of this product.